This is a picture of Saturn from the Hubble Space Telescope. This, on the other hand, is a picture from this telescope in the heavenly backyard. Let's talk about Saturn. Welcome to Heavenly Backyard Astronomy. The telescope that I use was the Celestron 11 inch. It's a F10 telescope with a focal length way out there, 2800 millimeters. You need those long focal lengths to get the planets because they're not very big at all. You know, even with the big telescope, the planet is still very small inside the field of view. As a matter of fact, let's go inside and talk a little bit more about the cameras that I use, the cameras that I will be using, and look at the software of retrieving the planets, particularly in this case, the planet Saturn. The camera that I used for this particular shot was the ZWO ASI 071, um, which is a one-shot color camera. I did have a uh, UV IR cut filter uh, in place uh, for this to um, uh, shoot the planet, I'm trying to get as much light as possible. And um, this is really a great camera for deep sky, but it's not the best camera for planetary. And I had ordered one in May, a planetary camera, the ZWO 585, the ASI 585. And guess what came in the mail today? <laughs> you guessed it, right here. There it is, the little 585. Uh, this is designed for planetary. So now, this is new astronomy equipment. So I apologize to all the people and all the astronomers in the Southeast United States. I got new equipment. That means seven days of clouds. Well, it looks like seven days at least. <laughs> Look at the forecast. Clouds, clouds, and more clouds. And on top of all the clouds, of course, will be the rains. So I'm keeping those telescopes covered outside. But uh, this camera hopefully will get even a better shot of the planet that I have over my shoulder here. Let's take a look at Stellarium, uh, see where the Saturn is, and take a look at where the other planets are. And then I'm going to peer in just a little bit of capturing Saturn that I used with the uh, ZWO ASI 071 camera. Let's take a look at the, um, the planets right now through Stellarium. And, and there's Saturn right over here at Sagittarius. And then over in Pisces, we have Jupiter. And then Mars is over here in Taurus. Uh, Uranus is over here, uh, just in the Aries area, between Aries and uh, Taurus, the bull. And Neptune is over in this vicinity around Aquarius at the time. But anyway, let's zoom in into uh, Saturn right now and see what's going on. Zooming into Saturn, and there you can see it right there. And, and if you have a good system, you, you can pick up the uh, the moons, some of the moons, but they're very, very difficult to, to uh, come about. Now, the rings are interesting because they don't always appear in this fashion here. As a matter of fact, let's take a look at some of the images I started taking back in 2017 and look at how the rings have been tilting over time. Now, it takes Saturn over 29 years to make one complete orbit around the sun. And the, the tilt of the uh, axis of rotation is about 27 degrees, a little less than 27 degrees. The exact number is 26.7 degrees. And uh, Saturn, uh, these rings appeared nearly uh, wide open on uh, in the year 2017 when I first started taking images. Actually, I took some in 2016 and 15, but I I, I'm not going to show you those <laughs> images. Uh, you can see my techniques are getting a little bit better over time. And look at the uh, images now, uh, the, uh, the one I just took uh, a couple of days ago. And there you can see more of the lower portion of the planet. I believe that's the North Pole, by the way, uh, being uh, more exposed now. And by the year 2025, uh, the rings will be they'll be edge on and just a straight line across and you'll be able to see most of the planet and eventually as the uh, the, the uh, rings become more uh, aligned in the orbit and they become more edge on uh, they'll be reflecting less light of course and hence the planet will appear dimmer than it does right now but right now it's a fairly bright uh, yellowish object up in the sky and uh, there you can see it right there all right, so here I have Saturn in the uh, field of view right here. And this is only 320 by 
240. So it's a very small field of view, uh, region of interest, ROI. And there you can see the yellowish uh, hue of Saturn. It looks like a yellow uh, star up in the sky. So currently Saturn's about 825 million miles away. <laughs> so it, and that, it's at its closest right now for the year. Um, what we call opposition. It's rising at the time the sun sets and it sets at the time of the sunrise. So it's up all night. But right now it has just cleared the trees in my uh, vantage point. Uh, it's still looking rather low in the atmosphere. So um, that's where you're getting all this uh, atmospheric interference right here. You can see it uh, wobbling around and so forth. That's the atmosphere causing that. As it gets up higher in the sky, it might smooth out a little more, and I might even get a, a little bit cleaner picture. But this is not bad right now. Saturn will be dominating the southern skies throughout the remainder of the summer months and then fading into the southwest by the autumn months. Meanwhile, Jupiter is coming into prominent, and right behind that is the fiery red Mars. Mars will be shining brightly red high in the southern skies by the uh, end of summer into the autumn months, not reaching opposition until December 8th. So uh, Mars is going to be up there all summer and autumn and into the winter months. And how do you process these images? Well, if you want to know how I did it, look at this video right here, right now. Thanks for watching. I better hurry up and cover up this telescope as the rain is just about ready to start once again.